Oh, and I see a live button now. All right, yep, yeah, we're live. So hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, our liaison training. My name is Austin Greathouse. I am the director of the Law Student Division, so I'm your staff uh, contact. Uh, you know, I mostly deal with administrative and business concerns of the division. Um, so uh, today we have Aaron Sohasky. He is our chair of the division. Uh, we have Adam Music, who is our web editor content guy. For the, uh, he's also a staff person here at the division. Uh, we have Fabiani. Say hi, Fabi. Hi, Fabiani. And he is our chair elect for the division. And we have Mike Dumas, who is the vice chair elect of the division. So today we're just going to talk a little bit about the uh, what we expect of liaisons, um, how you can make the most of your role, and um, uh, you, you know, you know, just things like that uh, to to kind of give you a, a good head start and, and what to expect for um, for your role as liaison. Um, and I just wanted to say that this is a really great opportunity as a liaison. It's one of the only leadership positions here at the law student division. Um, where your whole goal is to connect with lawyers. So it's, it's a really great opportunity in that your whole objective is just to go out there into your entity, make contact with lawyers. Um, they get to see your work. They get to see your, your passion and your um, capabilities. And, and I think that's, that's a really rare thing. So, so you guys are pretty smart in your, uh, tr uh, your liaison, um, becoming a liaison. So um, first thing we need you to do, I'm going to flip over to a screen share here. So that's, that's us. First thing I need you to do is to go to this link right here, tinyurl.com slash LSD liaison report. And what I need you to do is just select that you're here and submit the report um, after you've selected that, that you're attending this, this um, training. This is how we're going to take attendance today. Um, so I, I need you to do that. And um, while you're doing that, I'll just explain how the questions will work here. If you have a question, there should be, you should have the capability to write that question out in the um, Q&A app that, that Google Hangouts has. Uh, I think there should be something on your right-hand right side where you can ask those questions. Um, and you can do that. You should do that um, as soon as you have the question because there may be a bit of a delay. We may be speaking right now, and you may hear it later. Um, I've had that problem with Google Hangouts before. So just, just leave your questions as soon as you have it, and we'll get to it. Um, when we see it, and if not, you can always email us, and we will answer the question that way. But we prefer you to, to send us your questions um, during during the broadcast, so we can make this a little bit interactive. And and for our panelists, I'll let you know when we have a question, and, and we'll we'll save time at the end of the the presentation for questions. So with that, is it Aaron or Fabiani who's gonna gonna take over I now? I think it's Aaron. I think he's. Uh... He's going to kick us off. All right. Yes. So uh, first of all, welcome all, and thank you for joining us this Sunday evening. I uh, hope you are enjoying this format. It's different than what we have previously done uh, with our liaison training. It's typically been a conference call, so we hope this is a little bit of a more interactive uh, facilitation, and hopefully you can match your name with the face. Uh, so. I'm here to speak briefly about the structure of the ABA, and I, I know for myself one of the, the hurdles when I first walked into the ABA was trying to figure out who does what, who do you need to go to, where do you need to go to, and uh, where does it all fit in place. So the idea of this is to kind of figure out where uh, these positions all fall into line in the ABA hierarchy. Uh, so first of all, we have our uh, ABA House of Delegates, and these are the policy 
making uh, members uh, that are made up in our House of Delegates. And the law student division has three division delegates. Uh, and those members uh, that serve on our board, their greatest charge throughout the year is serving in the House of Delegates at the meetings uh, where that assembly votes. And so essentially they are our voice uh, in the greater ABA. So they are our advocacy arm. And when thinking about how this can affect you, if there is something that your entity, your section, division, or forum is strongly advocating towards and you want law student division support, the people that you will reach out to are your ABA uh, division delegates and they will be the ones that can advocate for the issue uh, that your particular section, division, and forum are advocating towards as long as and provided that those needs that your section, division, and forum is advocating on is something that also aligns with something that will do well for law students. Uh, then we have our the ABA Board of Governors and the ABA Board of Governors they are the uh, they oversee the general ABA operations uh, and those individuals are they handle the day-to-day -day operations of the ABA uh, and the law student division also has a voice within the ABA Board of Governors. We actually have one representative who is a voting member uh, to the ABA Board of Governors and, and they handle the operation side of things. So think of the, the ABA House of Delegates as your policy arm and your Board of Governors as your operations arm. Then we have our ABA entities and those are our sections, divisions, and forms. So the law student division is an entity within the ABA. So is the family law section or TIPS or state and local government, business law, etc. All of you who are liaisons are a part of these entities and therefore your entities report to the greater ABA. Then if we drill down even further, you have a reporting role with the law student division because the way a liaison works is that you are the intermediary between the entity that you represent and the law student division. So you're, you're serving two hats. You're the individual that lets us know what's going on in state and local government or lets us know what's going on with litigation. Uh, you are our boots on the ground, troops on the ground, intermediary. Um, and then finally going to the law student division. Uh, we have our own board, which is the Law Student Division Board of Governors, where we have currently eight national officers and our 15 circuit governors who are our regional reps. Those 23 individuals make up our Board of Governors, and so consequently we are the governing body of our Law Student Division entity. Just like the Young Lawyers Division, they have their council, which is their governing body. Uh, and many of you will have a close-knit group of people that mirror some sort of model similar to ours. Uh, and then lastly, as you'll see on the bottom here, we have our lawsuit division assembly. Uh, and this is the, the time when we can really push policy through the greater law student division. This is the only time we meet uh, in the entire year. Uh, and the people that are a part of our assembly are all the ABA representatives of all ABA accredited law schools as well as all SBA presidents of ABA accredited law schools. And this is our opportunity to promote policy and advocacy and change within the division itself. And the assembly votes on operational changes that, that will affect our bylaws, our voting structure, and just general, general uh, initiatives that we want to support throughout the year. So that is my five-minute rundown of the ABA structure. Uh, if you have any questions, Austin, I don't know if you've, you've directed everyone on how to type in those questions and how that structure works, but if we could briefly talk about how the question uh, Portion works on the sidebar just to make sure everybody's aware of that. 
Yep, and and I see some people have found the question and answer um, app on the right there. So yeah, just leave your questions if you have any. Some people were asking about uh, what that um, attendance link is, um, but you can see that a couple of folks posted the actual link. So just follow that and uh, copy and paste that into your browser. Follow that and uh, submit it. Uh, so next slide. Yes, please. So I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about the division structure. And if you, on the previous slide, we had our ABA uh, Law Student Division Board of Governors. And those are those 23 individuals on the board. And I just wanted you to see the rundown and what this looked like. Uh, you have your eight national officers on the left side where you see the chair, vice chair, et cetera. Um, and all of those roles obviously have their own the duties attached to it. The chair looks at the day-to-day -day operations and just the overall voice of the division and advocates for the board and for the law student division when um, everyone's not available to do so. The vice chair uh, is the, the second in command, the individual that oversees all membership related issues, uh, looks at ways to involve more law students from more law schools and making sure that they are uh, working with the ABA to uh, create a, a bond throughout the year and to make sure that there's a collaboration of ideas throughout all the ABA accredited law schools. Vice Chair SBA is uh, in charge of SBA presidents and looking at their interactions and making sure that they are uh, on board with the ABA greater initiatives and, and promoting those uh, initiatives through their law schools. Secretary Treasurer in charge of finance and and taking the minutes. Uh, also is in charge of our publication, the student lawyer. We have our one rep to the ABA Board of Governors. Uh, that individual is the person who is our voice on the greater ABA Board of Governors, which is uh, the day-to-day -day operations. And then we have our three division delegates who serve in the House of Delegates, who are our advocacy arm for the law student division. We then have our 15 circuit governors. Those are our regional reps and represent all the interests of law students uh, throughout the country on a regional level. And then we have our non-voting members, the chair-elect, vice chair-elect, secretary treasurer, rep to the BOG, and the student lawyer, student editor. Uh, and those individuals are elected in March at our, the board, our law student division board of governors spring meeting. And the idea is that those individuals will stick with the current chair, vice chair, et cetera, and shadow and learn best practices and learn how to navigate this very large structure that is within the ABA and, and how to effectively take over the reins when they take over the role at the August uh, annual meeting. So that is our division structure. Great. Thanks, Aaron. So, uh, Fabia, uh, remind our panelists to unmute yourselves before you uh, are ready to speak. Uh, and and Fabi, here we go. All right. Go. And all right, great. Hi, everybody. Um, well, um, my name is Fabiani Duarte. Thank you, Aaron, for uh, covering that. It's very important to kind of understand how uh, the beast operates, how the machine works. And um, now that you uh, have a, a bird's eye view of of how our organization is structured. I want to talk to you uh, about our vision for the year. Um, there are three main words that you see right there um, that uh, I would like uh, for our division to focus on and in conversations with Mike and Aaron and um, our leadership um, and all of our members, um, we have been able to create these buckets, these global themes that I want to um, kind of expand upon a little bit more that I hope will define uh, or help define the work that you're going to do for us this year. So um, uh, conveniently, they spell uh, B-A-R, bar. Uh, so we'll start with the B. Um, bold policy initiatives and advocacy. That's one of the most important things that we do. As you saw in Aaron's presentation, we have um, uh, an opportunity to present both resolutions uh, and long-term initiatives that affect uh, the the lives of law students. So. For example, uh, right now one of the big initiatives is a 305-2 initiative uh, about pay credit. 
right, about the ability for students who are doing externships, uh, uh, maybe some of you have done an externship, an unpaid internship basically, but also to be able to be paid at the same time. Currently, ABA rules prevent that from occurring, and Aaron and uh, previous leadership have advocated vigorously on this point, and there's been tremendous progress made on it. Um, so um, that is an example of one of those initiatives is you're from a, a state that is a UBE state, perform bar exam state, right? That's something that is uh, growing the ability to take bars in different states and have them count for those states. New York is uh, the 16th, uh, the newest state to have added uh, uh, that, that new feature. Um, so issues like that, issues like student debt, but also we want to be bold in the short term. I really want um, our liaisons to join us in creating and producing a report card for this year. Um, so in the short term, I want us to um, not only uh, get some of these big policy initiatives rolling, but I want to see us um, develop some things that we can say a year from now, look what we achieved. For example, um, there have been a lot of interest, there's a lot of interest in developing mentorship programs, mentorship that is uh, made available in the relationships that you build with your sections, divisions, and forums um, for, for people there to uh, mentor uh, students on the ground. There's been a lot of uh, interest in uh, on student debt, not just generally, or going beyond like, debt counseling, which is important, but I think there's a lot more that we can do. For example, the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program that many of you are familiar with, many of you uh, are counting on, like me, I'm, I'm working for the Air Force, I'm interested in becoming a JAG officer. The Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program is something that's really important to me, but unfortunately it uh, appears on the chopping block uh, for congressional budget cuts every year, and so we need to vigorously uh, advocate so that uh, doesn't suffer. Um, and then, of course, um, there's uh, the big interest in reducing the cost uh, that, uh, of uh, conferences. Uh, this is something that Mike is very passionate about, and he'll talk a little bit more about. Um, uh, you know, we have lots of conferences that the sections, divisions, and forums uh, offer to law students, but unfortunately, they're not accessible to everyone because of the sometimes really high price tag. Uh, there are some conferences that are more accessible, so that's a bold initiative that we can do to either eliminate those or reduce those significantly for students. Number two, approachability. So as you're probably aware, we have free membership available for law students, but so what? Um, we want to make sure that uh, that free membership doesn't make uh, students take their membership for granted. So we want to approach students to us, right? And we're doing that, Adam will talk about some of the ways that we're doing it through new and um, proactive modern social media mechanisms, a new website, um, new value, valuable uh, benefits. Uh, Quimby is a, is a online study aid that we're going to be um, unveiling for students. Uh, it's a company that maybe some of you are familiar with. Um, other new benefits that uh, some of our members are working on, um, like Learn Leo or, or maybe partnerships with uh, possibly Amazon or other things like that uh, that we can really give to students so they can see value in their membership. And of course we want people to approach us um, because of the bridge that you are building with the different sections, divisions, and forums. We really want to build better synergy with them uh, because uh, what's so great about the law student division is that if we do our job well, we become a pipeline to the other sections, divisions, and forums. And um, right now, something that I think is important for you all to know is that with the free membership, now there is a five cap uh, entity uh, entry. Uh, so that means uh, a new first year law student uh, can join the law student division and has access to join five other entities for free, plus one more, the young lawyers division. Uh, so as you can probably see, there's a lot of incentive uh, for uh, uh, sections, divisions, and forums to get new law students involved because law students have a limited number of free memberships that they can have. So you guys will be integral brokers when it comes to that. Um, and finally, uh, when it comes to approachability, we want our uh, division to approach the, the sections, divisions, and forums that you're uh, liaising with. Uh, you see, there's a lot of work that we can do together from our leadership uh, standpoint with theirs when it comes to drafting resolutions, um, not duplicating efforts. Uh, maybe some of you have heard about the, the Triple LT initiative, right? The Limited Law License Technician. 
program. Uh, I think Washington has been um, uh, has been kind of doing a pilot program of this. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a controversial issue. Some people think it's a wonderful way that gives new access to justice to people who can't afford um, full-fledged attorneys. Uh, and then other, others think it, it might be um, a, a difficult issue uh, for, for law students uh, entering the workforce who are going to be competing against um, what, what could be compared to as a, uh, a nurse practitioner to a doctor, right? Um, so those are really interesting things that you can help us build bridges to with these, um, with these uh, um, uh, different sections, divisions, and forums. All right, and finally, uh, relevance. Um, well, that's, that's perhaps uh, the, the biggest, biggest issue that uh, we're going to be finding, not just this year, but every year, right? Uh, help us make ABA relevant in the lives of students. And the way we can do that is being value creators. Um, now, uh, you know, we, we talk about different ways that we can create new value, and I've talked about some of those ways, but there's a lot of value that already exists that we just need to shine a spotlight on. So one of those great ways that you can help us do that is direct students, whether it's an orientation this fall or by having panels come to your school, representatives from um, these sections, divisions, forums uh, come and talk to students um, and rally them to attend these events. Uh, some of them are free, uh, some of them are at reduced cost. Uh, regardless, uh, being able to show students that there's a lot uh, available to them, that would be great. Um, so we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a moment, but those are the three big ideas that I wanted to focus on you with, uh, with uh, uh, today. So uh, I think we'll keep moving. And um, Aaron, I think uh, we'll uh, go ahead and kick you off here. And my microphone muted up there. Thank you, Bobby, and that was, thank you for that bar approach. Uh, sounds like an excellent plan that you can utilize throughout your year as chair, and I'm sure the liaisons will get on board. Uh, and speaking of getting on board, let's talk about some of those goals of our liaisons. And first of all, I like to tell people when they get into the role of liaison that it's really about what you make of your time with your section, division, and forum. You have to remember that many of the individuals you'll be interacting with are giving up their time and also working 50, 60, 70 hours a week. Uh, and their first priority may not be their law student liaison. Uh, so I say that to you with the caveat of these individuals are more than willing to help you and to work with you to achieve your goal and to help law students because these leaders recognize that law students are the future pipeline for their sections, divisions, and forums. And without you and without your support, it's not going to continue to thrive and flourish in the coming years. So they understand that law students have an integral role. But that being said, you have to have outreach with your sections, divisions, and forums. So in order to make sure that you are continuously interacting with your section, division, and forum and making sure that you're bringing content towards uh, the law student division, we want you to facilitate for either events or content for students. Now, events can be something as small as a, mixed, uh, a mixer for law students uh, uh, at a conference uh, that I'll just take business law for instance. I know a lot of times business law they have mixers and events for their members and many a times the places where they hold their conferences are population dense areas where there are many law schools within a short driving distance. So what could one do? You could create a, uh, you can make sure that law students are have a discounted rate to attend uh, this mixer event and make sure that law students uh, are present at one of their conferences. As far as content goes, we have a brand new website that we are going to be rolling out in the beginning of September and that, that is our tentative start date for the new website. We want to make sure that if there is content that your section, division, and forum 
has that are relevant to law students that we are putting that on our website and essentially creating this uh, content database of all these different areas of law that law students can go their first, second, and third year and learn more about all these different areas of law that the ABA has targeted with their sections, divisions, and forums. Uh, so that is a 30,000 foot approach of our events and content and how we want you to get involved. And obviously throughout the year there will be greater conversations on different ways and tips and tricks as to how we can uh, make sure that these four events and uh, content pieces happen. Uh, but just start thinking right now in your role as liaison what specifically you would like to accomplish uh, and what those four events might look like. And when you do your reach out to the leadership, bring that up to them and let them know that this is the law student division's plan and this is where my ideas are right now. How can we work together to accomplish those? Because if you come to them with a plan, you come to them with an idea, and you come to them with concrete steps on how this is actually going to come back to the law student division, they're going to be ready to jump on board and help you out. So, All right. Thanks, Are we ready to uh, move on to the next slide? This is where so. Mike comes in. So yeah, just to reiterate, like like Aaron said, what we're looking for are, are folks, you as liaisons, to get involved with your entity, uh, get out there, and and someone who's had a ton of success with that is our our incoming uh, vice chair, and he's been very very much involved in, in his entities that that he's he's worked with as a liaison, as well as just a, a person who's who, who's been very active in the ABA within that division and really reaped the rewards of that and and I think he can really speak to that right now. Mike, I think you may be muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay. Sorry. These headphones are terrible. Um, so I Austin, thank you. I know we're approaching 8:30, so I'll try to keep it uh, pretty short and sweet. Um, as liaisons, as newly appointed liaisons, you're sort of in the position of, okay, I've been appointed, now what do I do? Um, and one of the big things you need to be doing is uh, reaching out to these sections uh, and, and introducing yourself uh, not only to uh, the chair of the section, uh, but also the staff. Uh, the staff can be your best friend as far as uh, telling you where to go, helping you out with reimbursement, uh, and I would encourage you, uh, there should be a fact sheet outlining reimbursement um, and some of the different procedures for your individual sections because it's not all the same. I would encourage you to familiarize yourself with that uh, because that's going to become really important when it comes time to uh, actually attending in-person meetings. Uh, so make sure you're introducing yourself to the staff. Um, Aaron sort of touched on it. Uh, you've got to be the initiator here. Um, you know, these, these sections are made up of, of tons of lawyers who are volunteering their time, uh, who have a lot of things on their plate, um, and at the top of their list, it's probably not going to be uh, coming out and hand-holding you uh, into the section. So it's, it's important that you get yourself out there, uh, introduce yourself. Uh, if you're coming to annual, uh, I would strongly encourage you to visit the uh, section's webpage, figure out what their schedule is, go to some of their meetings, uh, just show up, introduce yourself, say, hey, I'm the new law student liaison, um, I'd love to be involved. Uh, if you're not coming to annual, look into that funding because uh, most sections will have uh, a fall meeting, usually October, sometimes as early as September, sometimes as late as November. Um, and if you're able to go to that, uh, that's a fantastic place where uh, it's just going to be a concentration of that section's members. Um, they're going to be focused on conducting business. They're going to be holding uh, CLE sections, uh, which are great things to invite local students to because they can have some really great programming. Um, I, I can think of a few I've gone to in the past few months, legalized marijuana, urban farming, uh, just sort of very specific things, but things that are, are new and emerging in the law that can be interested to, uh, interesting to other law students uh, in law schools in the, uh, the city where the conference is being held. So find out when that is, find, that where, find out where that is, uh, and try to make plans to attend. Uh, let me keep reading this list. Uh, don't be afraid to suggest new ideas. Uh, these sections, to be very candid with you, a lot of them have no idea how to talk to law students. 
uh, and a lot of them will be open uh, in admitting that. So uh, feel free to give your input. If you have an idea that you think, hey, this might be a good way for us to reach out to law students, suggest it. Uh, you know, talk to their membership committee. I, I think every section has a membership committee whose sole purpose uh, is to increase the membership, not only dues-paying members, but also law students who they hope will turn into dues-paying members. Um, some of them have law student committees. I would encourage you to uh, introduce yourself to uh, that committee, that chair, uh, and become involved. Um, if they don't have one, maybe you suggest that they create one. Um, and the last point I want to make, and I promise I'm trying to wrap this up quickly, um, there are some sections with uh, very active young lawyers committees. Um, these are new, young-ish members um, who, uh, if you're not familiar with the ABA, the YLD, the Young Lawyers Division, uh, has a fantastic energy uh, filled with amazing, bright, energetic people. Uh, and a lot of those people populate these committees down in the sections. Um, so uh, it can be a great way of, of not only um, sort of facilitating one-to-one uh, -one outreach with uh, area law schools, you know, say there's a, an active young lawyer member uh, in your section in San Francisco. Um, maybe you encourage them to go out to, you know, Golden Gate University Law, um, some of the other law schools in the area to do outreach so they can recruit members. Uh, with that new 5 SDF cap for law students, uh, it's going to get competitive with these sections because uh, students aren't just signing up for every section now. There's a limit, so they're going to be competing for a lot of law student members. So it's a great opportunity uh, to sort of foster those on-the-ground relationships uh, that can be very valuable. So uh, your experience is what you make of it. If you have any questions, even if you feel it's a stupid question, uh, ask us. Uh, we've got experience, we've got uh, ideas, and, and we'd love to hear your ideas. So don't be afraid to reach out with a text message or, you know, in person at annual or a phone call, a Facebook message, uh, whatever it is, um, we're here to help you. So uh, if there's anything we can do, just let us know. Great. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, that is really, really valuable advice because, like, like I said, this is your chance to get out there in front of leaders in the ABA, lawyers who, who are established in their profession, and, and really establish yourself in their minds. So um, with, with that in mind, um, we can talk briefly ab ab about events. We, we talk, Aaron hit on this a little bit. And Aaron, do you want to talk a little bit more about these opportunities? Yeah, so I, can, I can bring this home. And I actually see a question that I can tie in uh, to this slide itself. Uh, and I think it's Kirsten who asks, are there funds available for these events? And, and the answer to that is the law student division is not, wouldn't be necessarily the avenue that would give funding to you. However, those sections, divisions, and forums, based on their business model, some sections, divisions, and forums will have funding where they can either offer scholarships to law students to go to these events, or they will give a reduced cost to law students where they're paying some of the fees. But from what I have anecdotally observed throughout the years I've, I've been in the ABA and on uh, serving in leadership committees is that those sections, divisions, and forums are going to be more than willing to help you with funding and get you the resources you need, provided you're not going to them and saying, hey, I want to do an event. How much money can you give to me? And rather changing the conversation and saying, I want to do this event. There's X, Y, and Z interests in this event, and here's what it's going to cost. How can we work together to make this happen? So ultimately what it comes down to is that if you come to them with a plan with your financials in order for this event, they're going to listen. What is tough is when somebody goes to the leadership committee of these section divisions and forums and says, I want to do this event. How can can you put this together for me? Uh, because ultimately, these individuals are volunteers. Um, and they don't have the resources uh, or the energy at times to put something like that together. Uh, so to answer your question, it would be the section division and forum that would be the person you'd go to for your funding. So whatever section division or forum you're a part of, um, you want to make sure that 
the cost that you come to an agreement to is something that you would believe as a law student is a reasonable amount of money. Uh, and also making sure that the event that you would be putting law students in front of is an event that actual law students would want to go to. Because as Mike was saying, there are some wonderful CLEs out there. But there are also very high level CLEs that a first, second, or third year law student would be very intimidated going to. And they wouldn't necessarily see the value even if that CLE is at a discounted price and they just want to learn more about the subject. So we want to make sure that we are cautious in the events that we're putting law students in front of and making sure that these are law, these are events that law students will enjoy and have a great time at. OK. Uh, that's good. So now um, going on to our uh, next slide, uh, right here, we, uh, we again, I mentioned this earlier. And one of the great things about uh, the relationships you guys are going to be building um, with your sections, divisions, and forums is that they're going to um, hopefully become interested in coming to your school. Um, so um, you guys um, aren't alone in this effort. Uh, we have representatives in every school. Um, uh, they're called ABA representatives. Maybe you know who they are at your school. Uh, of course, your SBA presidents who uh, can help you in possibly hosting um, a representative. For example, at my school last year, I, I go to Mercer Law in uh, Macon, Georgia. Um, we had uh, a member of the section uh, on litigation that came from Atlanta, spoke to us, uh, talked to us about career advice, about um, how he got into the session of law that he's involved in, um, how the ABA has impacted his life, and invited us to attend the Section on Litigation Conference. And so um, that having that uh, visitor come, uh, as, uh, as my, my parents from Colombia, and so they would probably say, the face of the prophet makes miracles happen. And so when, when your fellow students see um, the, the actual person uh, from uh, who's a practicing lawyer, um, they can really get inspired by that, and you can be that bridge to that profit. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's something I, I, I really encourage you guys to do, not just get students to their events, but get them to your schools. Thanks, Fabio. That's perfect. Yeah, and again, the idea is just to coordinate with, with, your, with your ABA reps, coordinate with your entity to create either, and not just create something, but if, if there's already something that your entity is doing, uh, you know, have them think about how they can get a student involved, how they can bring students into that, you know, whether it's a reception, whether it's a panel aimed at students. You know, most of these entities are doing meetings already, so so once you get involved into your membership committee and, and your meetings committee or what, whatever that the case is, you know, talk to your chair and say, hey, let's, let's put something on for students at this next event. Um, so next up, um, we're going to talk a little bit about content. Uh, this is Adam Music. He's our web editor. He's going to be heading up um, the the content on our new website that we've been talking about. So, Adam, take it away. Uh, good evening. Uh, like uh, Fabiani said, that we want to shine a spotlight on uh, the work that uh, the ABA does, the work that your entities do. So, what we're um, the website really is that place that showcases everything. And what you can help us do is you can help us shine that spotlight on um, on all that your entities are doing. One of the easiest ways to do that is with your entity profiles. Uh, for instance, I, I have a link here uh, to a uh, to the uh, a profile from student lawyer from the ABA, where they took a couple of committees, they did a uh, uh, hot practice profiles where you see we have the intellectual property commit um, property uh, area of law you can see that there's a, a profile of uh, Andrew Halabi uh, if you scroll down a little bit there are a little bit of a quick hit a little bit more and at the tail end right there you have like ABA resources uh, what is copyright uh, what is a trademark, so that there is information about that section there. And that's one of the easiest ways that you as a liaison can uh, can help your entity out 
is you can profile the leaders of your your committee or your section. You can talk about what they're up, what they're doing, what their initiatives are for the year. Um, all of that is really good information. Find someone doing something that uh, is new and innovative. Uh, in terms of the blog articles, that uh, the types of things that you can get, um, tips, easy one. You're in different practice areas. There's different aspects of those practice areas that you can focus on. Uh, this one's from Ms. JD. Uh, there's a series that they did, uh, Three Things My Peers and I Wish We'd Known Before Starting Law School. Uh, that's a great thing to do. Maybe you, you could localize that to your entity, um, three things happening in intellectual property that you should bone up on before you uh, get out there in the marketplace. Um, three ways to network. Listicles, super easy. They're a little bit buzzfeedy in how they're presented sometimes, but they contain a lot of really good information. Here's someone talking about law school and how to cope, uh, you know, meditation, music, etc. Uh, just a, a series of, you know, 10 ways to get through the bar exam, 10 ways to start your 1L year. Things of that nature are good listicles. Personal branding, it's very important these days, uh, a hot topic in any field, uh, even beyond the law. If, if you look at that, uh, this is from uh, Lex blog talking about, um, he starts about talking about LinkedIn and then the importance of why you should also blog. Uh, see there it says personal blog is where it's all going to begin. Uh, it's a way for uh, lawyers and your future clients to meet you. That's a great thing uh, in terms of personal branding. Uh, the last one on that was uh, paying for law school. You have this couple who between them uh, took home from law school a six-figure bill. So now they've started a blog talking about how to pay for that six-figure bill. Everybody's going to love those tips because 99% of law students are going to walk out with a lot of loans they're going to have to repay. This is this is a, a great way to talk to law students that are not only in pre-law, uh, currently in law school, and also out of law school trying to, to deal with uh, to deal with their finances. Podcasts. If you find a, a good podcast or we're exploring uh, a partnership with Legal Talk Network. They have uh, a lot of areas right now that they're working on. This is one, uh, relaxing on vacation, how to unplug from your career, set it aside for a second. Stephanie Francis Ward is from the ABA. So if, if you find someone that would make a great host or a great subject, uh, a way to do a regular podcast for your entity, for your committee. Uh, we want to know about those people. We want to, again, put the spotlight on them like Fabi uh, said. The other, uh, we have video. And we've, uh, we've looked at uh, profiles, again, of people. The first profile is a, a lawyer that I've done some work with in Chicago, Tina Martini. Was that the first one? Yeah, uh, Tina Martini uh, here in Chicago, uh, talking about big law. Uh, that's a, that, again, people, uh, as Fabi said, want to see the face that is speaking to them. Uh, events. These last two are, are videos that I took at the last ABA annual meeting in Chicago. This is uh, where I just stopped some some of the lawyers by the registration and said. Hey, uh, why are you here? Why are you here? Why is this important? Why did you get into law? And it's a, it's quick. You can see it's a, it's nine minutes, which is maybe even a little bit too long, but it, it's great information when you are actually meeting these people. The the law life one, the the last video link there. Um, I went and talked to all of the uh, the expo people, showing the things they were giving away what they were doing, why they were doing it. There was the Alaska rep trying to get sections to come to Alaska and host a meeting for your section in Alaska. And you'll see when when you're in Chicago for the meeting, if you're if you're going to be there, 
all of the stuff that they, they give away in the expo, you, you can meet a lot of very interesting people because the life of a lawyer isn't just the law. It's the um, it, it's dealing with wellness. It's dealing with finances. It's looking at all the interactions you get outside of the practice, uh, outside of your clients. So we really want to show that rich life of a law student, uh, a lawyer, so you know what to prepare for, and to show pre-law students what to expect. Webinars in CLE, I, I don't really have a link for those, but those would be another good thing to profile. We'll be doing a lot of linking out from the blog as well. And, and photos, again, we, we want to show that what you're doing. Um, we could put a photo on the blog that is those events that you're planning. Um, show the people that, that came out. Make, we can make a little gallery. Uh, we can throw it out on Twitter. We can throw it out on Facebook. And that's thing, those are pieces of content that people eat up. I used to work on a, uh, a private, well, not private, but a password-protected network for lawyers. And one of the biggest things is photos. So whenever you have an idea for, uh, you know, say, should I take a photo of this? Should I not take a photo? Send it, and we'll, we'll see what we can do with it. We, we want to showcase what you're doing, what your leaders are doing, and give you a, a really good forum to reach law students uh, across the country, even across the world. Great. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, and uh, just to... Just to uh, follow up on this, and this is going to answer the question that, that I think uh, a lot of you guys are wondering about. Um, so, so that's this, this question that's at the top. I see you guys have voted it towards the top. It says, uh, this is giving me a good overview, but are, are we going to receive more specific breakdown of our responsibilities? Um, I don't feel like I have a good grip on our specific responsibilities. So these are your responsibilities. What you need to do is go out to your entity, um, reach out to someone there, reach out to a committee, or you know, if it's a smaller entity, you may want to talk to the chair, and, and, and as Mike said, include the staff, and, and figure out ways that you can integrate yourself into leadership, and then get them to start thinking about um, what they can do for law students, and what types of things, uh, whether that's events, as, as Fabiani mentioned, Fabiani and Aaron both mentioned events, um, so coordinate uh, with the ABA rep, coordinate with your entity and the ABA rep, someone on leadership with, with your entity showing up to a law school. So that's a valuable thing. That's, that's one of the things that, that we want you to do. Coordinate and facilitate your entity pushing out a, a program um, for law students that has content that's relevant to them at, at, a, at a lower price. Get them to think about the, the pricing for students and then we'll promote it for the entity. Um, so you know, there's also the, the fact that, as, as I said, there's most of your entities are out there doing in, in-person events. So get your entity to think about um, having a reception for law students, having a, a single um, panel that's specifically aimed at, at law students, and then you'll recruit some students for them. So that's what they need help with. They need help thinking about how to recruit law students, how to bring them in, and um, they'll be thankful to have someone like you to help them with that. And what we're looking for from this is this link that, that you had earlier, the uh, tinyurl.com slash LSD liaison report. So what we need you to do is every month, and we'll try to send an email reminder each month <clears throat> for you to do it, but we, on a monthly basis we need you to report back on your, your success so far in creating those events, or not just creating, just coordinate, coordinating them or, or pushing them through our, uh, through our channels so students can see them. Um, reporting back to us and telling us, hey, I created um, this, this event for law students on this campus. Or reporting back to us, and this, this will all be built into the reporting system, it's an online survey. Um, just report back that um, I created, um, I created a, a piece of content, an article for Student Lawyer, which is our magazine, or an article for the website once it's there. Um, I put I, I worked with a, a lawyer in my entity uh, and just interviewed them for a quick article on the blog and this is what we came up with and that's what you're going to be reporting on. So I, I hope that makes sense. 
Um, so, so that's what we need you to do, uh, and, and what we're hoping to get from, from liaisons. Um, so, so that, that kind of covers that, and hopefully everyone saw the uh, URL. Again, we'll send that out so it's a little clearer. Um, and, and we'll send an email, or we'll send everyone's email, um, so you can follow up with us, and you can uh, ask us any questions you have. And, and I see some questions, and we'll address those um, in, the, uh, in the questions right now. Um, so again, this, the question is, um, can we get the slide deck by email? Yes, we'll include that. We'll include uh, that, everyone's email, who's on this panel. And you can contact us anytime with questions. Um, so, so that, to answer that question, yes, we'll, we'll send this around. Um, so hopefully that reporting makes sense. Uh, we have a couple more things to go over. And I know we're running long. We weren't sure how long this would take. This, this is all new. So, so bear with us. But this is important stuff. Um, so, so next step, and, and Fabiani's going to yeah. handle this. All right, yeah, so um, your, your questions about uh, specifically what to do, here, here it is, your script, this is what you got to do, real easy. So uh, we've talked about it, Mike talked about it, um, and Austin talked about it, we need you to reach out to one of these three or all of these three at the same time, okay, your entity, uh, so your section, division, or forum, uh, membership chair, the chair of that group, and CC, you know, uh, in an email, the staff director, uh, like Mike was saying, having looping staff is, is really key to um, sometimes getting buy-in for these panels, these receptions, um, the content, um, and this is what you're going to say. So uh, just right there. Hi, my name is Fabiani, and I've been appointed to serve as the new ABA Lost Beams Vision Liaison to your entity. The goal of my position is to build a bridge between um, you and um, and a possible pipeline from the law student division and your entity. Um, I'm from blank, and I go to law school at this place. And so next slide, um, you're going to really focus in on these next two questions uh, on our next slide. Uh, Austin, if we can go to the next slide. There we go. Uh, thank you. And um, so this is what uh, we really want you to say. This could be your first email, your first, first phone call, probably an email. We're planning to host uh, SDA, SDF members at our law schools to give advice and share why the ABA has been meaningful in their lives. So I have two questions. Number one, who would be the right person to visit a school and give a 20 to 30 minute talk about your entity, um, your section division or forum? All right, and then number two, who would be someone from your entity um, that we profile uh, in our student lawyer magazine um, or our podcast that we're going to be uh, unveiling uh, or a blog post on our website or some, some of the resources that Adam was, was able to kind of highlight. Um, and so uh, those are the two questions that we want you guys to, to first ask. This is kind of your first micro task that we want to... Um, uh, have, have you um, launch your, your, your work as a liaison. Um, and so I think uh, in that question of what are our specific responsibilities, this is going to kick you off into something that we hope you can produce uh, in the next couple of months. And, um, and then um, uh, you know, after that, uh, we want you to see if we can continue building based on that survey uh, and also based on any questions you, that you might have. Um, so I hope that's clear on your first two tasks, I guess, or, your, uh, or your, I guess it's all combined into one email easily to see uh, who can um, uh, be the right person to answer each of those questions. All right? Thanks, Fabi. So um, a, a few more questions, and hopefully we'll keep it under an hour, so, so that's good. Um, Somebody was wondering how the national officers and the circuit governors are selected. Aaron, do you want do you want to answer that question real quick? Unmute yourself. Absolutely. Uh, so as far as the circuit governors, how they were elected <laughs> at their regional meeting, which was their meeting that they held in the spring. Uh, typically, this is a gathering of uh, law school. Uh, a, a regional represent uh, each, okay sorry there is the spring circuit meetings 
and at the Spring Circuit meeting, which is a regional meeting. Uh, for instance, I'm in the Sixth Circuit, and my Spring Circuit meeting encompasses all ABA law schools in Michigan, Ohio, and Kentucky. Um, and at, at the end of that meeting, the circuit governor that will continue to represent that circuit is elected for national officers. Uh, those individuals are either elected at our Spring Board of Governors meeting or at the annual meeting at Assembly. Uh, so there, in essence, are three different opportunities and three different cycles for voting for all the various positions. Uh, and that's, that's the selection process. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little complicated. Uh, there's more info on our website. Um, so hopefully you, you can uh, take a look there and see what our, our leadership structure and governance looks like right now. Um, and I posted the link to that in the Hangout page. Oh, great. Thanks, Adam. Um, so here's another <coughs> question. Can law students change their mind about which entities they sign up for? After a student signs up for their five entities, can they remove themselves from one to add themselves to another? So the answer is yes. And the best way to do that right now is to call the ABA customer service number. And I, I think I know it off the top of my head, but I'm not going to say it because I might get it wrong. But it's, it's plastered across the website. You'll be able to find it. Um, it's an 800 number. So that is how students can change. And, that, and your entity should know that as well um, as they try to recruit students because that's their whole goal. They want students to become members, unless you're a smaller entity which doesn't have membership, which are a few, a few of your entities to those, or uh, liaisons to those. But um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it, in terms of, of getting students to, to switch their entity, that's, that's the way that works, is have them give uh, customer service a call. Um, let's see, monthly reports. Uh, we'll say they're, they're due by the 30th of that month, or the, the, the last day of the month. So, so once you have your, um, you're ready to report, you can go ahead and do that. And the important thing to remember is these reports are going to be aimed at getting you to uh, report back the, the, the content you helped create or the events that you, you helped coordinate within your entity. But we need you to report each month to, to keep on track. Um, so, so do that by the end of the month. And uh, just a few more questions. Um, this is a good one. So what is the relationship between the student division liaisons and a section law student committee? What are they doing that we don't? And, and Mike, uh, uh, do you want to answer that one? I think you'd be a good person to, to answer that. Sure. Um, in a lot of cases, uh, or at least the cases that I've run into, um, some of them aren't really sure what they're doing. Um, to put it pretty frankly. Um, a lot of them don't know sort of what we've been pushing for in the law student division. Um, so they, they sort of need to be brought up to speed on, on things, uh, you know, sort of in the past now, but uh, the SDF cap, uh, free law student membership, um, you've got you've to gotta remember that sometimes the information they're getting, uh, they're getting from their chairs and their staff, and they don't always know what we know. So um, they also have their own ideas of how to uh, reach out to law students. So uh, for example, one section I'm involved with, they've identified schools with very high law student uh, membership in the ABA, but very low membership in that particular section. Uh, so what they're doing is they've identified those schools, and now they're going to find somebody to go out to that school. Um, there are other sections uh, who uh, will issue their own newsletter. So it's 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 really very autonomous uh, when you look at what we're doing. So you can a help uh, you know bridge the gap between uh, you know what we're doing and what what they're doing, um, and also let them know what they can be doing better because you've got to remember these are lawyers trying to figure out how to talk to law students. So that's not always going to come out uh, with the most uh, efficient results. So I hope that helps answer your question. 
Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, and I, think, I think part of the answer is, too, is that as a liaison, you want to look to be a part of that committee, obviously, because, as Mike said, they don't always... No, I mean, there might be a, a law student committee that doesn't have a law student on it. Sometimes you'll find that in here. So this is your opportunity to really get involved with that committee. Um, and and each, each section is different. It's not a one-size-fits-all thing. And that's what we're trying to do is to give you sort of uh, the leeway and the capability, to the flexibility that you need to create whatever your entity thinks is important for recruiting law students for them. Um, and, and whether that's, again, content or events or things like that that, that can reach students. Um, so, so, yeah, that's a, that's a great answer. And, and look to get involved. If, if, if your entity has, has a law student committee, make sure you, you, know, you find your way onto that. Um, find the person who's the chairing that committee. Talk to that person. Um, make sure you, they need to know that you want to help out. You, you have to take some initiative. You've got to get out there and put yourself out there. Um, so, so find that person, make contact, and uh, get involved and help them out. Um, and, and I think this, this next question is going to be for Aaron. Um, let's see. What, Aaron, which, which question did you want to handle here? I think you said. Um, I see, can we get contact for info for the previous liaison for our section? And we have a database of that that I, I know Jen Poggi, who is uh, on the Law Student Division staff, that she would have access to that, that we could certainly send out. Um, also, do you think that's, we could do that for the incoming class of liaisons? Yes, we can do that. Great. And, and I think they are listed on the website. And it was actually Aaron who wanted to, or, or, I'm sorry, it was Adam who wanted to um, handle the next question. Sorry about that. Um, uh -huh. Adam, did, did you want to add something about um, this comment about LLLTs in Wisconsin, or Washington? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, Mer uh, Meredith Conley's question. Uh, that would be a great thing to send me some information about or write it up yourself. Uh, talk about that. I, I, I just uh, Googled it as it, uh, being a new initiative up in Washington. And that's an opportunity that... You know, maybe someone entering law school or exiting law school wants to explore. So that that's a that's a good type of content that um, would be good to share with the uh, the rest of you know the the rest of the states. So uh, if you have that, uh, you can email me and we can talk about it. Great. So uh, this next question uh, is a question about a handbook. Um, there's currently not a handbook right now um, because, again, what, all, we, all we're asking, all we want you to do, it's, it's not a one-size-fits-all sort of thing. We want you to get involved in your entity. We want you to go to the chair, the director, the, the membership committee, chair, um, folks like that, at, and get involved and have them start thinking about and producing stuff for students and sending that our way so we can filter it uh, through the division onto students and they can reach more students in that way and um, we get some great content out of it and you get a chance again to get yourself out there in front of working attorneys so it's, it's a win-win-win all around um, so it's a great opportunity um, to really get involved um, let's see the, I think that answers most of the questions that we have right now. And if there are any more questions, um, I'd encourage you, again, we're going to send around our email addresses of everyone on this panel. Feel free to, uh, any one of us would be more than happy to answer your questions. Um, we're, we're happy to help. Um, if there are any, does, does anyone on the panel want to add anything else? This is Fabi. I just want to say congratulations to everybody. Uh, and I think some people, uh, raised, some of our teammates raised their hands. But I want to say congratulations, guys. Welcome to the team. And we're excited to, to work with you. Uh, I see you know, Randall's uh, comment right there, the Student Action Committee for your entity of comprised principally of students. Um, and so just like what, what uh, Austin was talking about, uh, one size doesn't fit all. Some sections Visions and four have a, a stronger relationship with students. Uh, let's see if we can harness that uh, involvement, right? And and maybe um, having 
those those students so integrated into that section division or forum uh, will make those events at your schools or bringing students to those conferences uh, much more um, uh, m m much easier, right? Uh, much more viable. So I would say use that. Um, I think some of the other uh, panelists have some some comments they want to make. Yeah, it, and this this is this is a good one by Randall as well. Um, what's the exact date we officially take over or uh, you know start start your job? You can start now. I mean, you can start next week. Um, it's a volunteer organization, so you can get out there and volunteer now. Do take those first steps that that Fabi talked about, reaching out to your committee, let them know, hey, you're the incoming. Um, and and the official term is is actually starts at annual, so it's uh, the annual meeting, which is in early August. Um, so that's the official start date. But I'd really encourage you to to start getting out in front of your your uh, membership committees and your chair and and your division director and and staff right now. Um, I, I think it's one of the best things you can do. Um, so, so don't run wait. Run with it. Get out there and run with it. Exactly. Yep. Um, so, with that said, I'd like to wrap it up. Uh, any other comments from the panel? Just contact us whenever you, um, whenever you have a question. Mike, did you have something to say? Uh, I did, and and like Fabi, uh, you know, I want to welcome all you guys to the team. Uh, you guys are really uh, integral to uh, our success and, and helping bring content to students um, and, and sort of showing them the benefit of ABA membership. I also want to let you know um, I'm happy to work up sort of a, a checklist uh, by annual to, to sort of get you started, um, things to be thinking about. I know we're throwing a lot of it at you. Uh, you know, it's new territory, um, and I'd be happy to, you know, not a, an end-all, be-all, but sort of, some things to keep in mind as you're getting started, um, and then you'll pick it up and you'll get it natural. So uh, I'll try to have that done by uh, annual. That would be awesome, Mike. All right. Um, also look for this video on uh, YouTube. We'll have a video of this, and um, you'll be able to share it with anyone who couldn't make it today. Um, with that, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your time. I know we went long. I apologize for that. We'll know next year to make this at least an hour. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, I look forward to working with everyone. Thank you, guys. We'll see you all later. Bye, Bye, everybody. Take care.